Hey everyone, and welcome back to Superhero Headquarters. I am your host, Miss Dorch, and here at Superhero Headquarters, we are molding the superheroes of tomorrow, one mission at a time. In today's video, we're going to talk all about departmentalized school. I'm schools. I'm going to give you some pros and some cons and some tips and some tricks. Okay. So if you're going to be teaching at a departmentalized school and you just want to know how you need to navigate these waters, come along. Hey, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you're notified on everything Superhero Headquarters. Also, hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you. So, first, I'm going to start with the cons, okay? And honestly, I can only find two cons to a departmentalized school. I have been teaching in a departmentalized school for two years. Um, so, yeah, my first con is that you teach a lot more kids. So in a self-contained classroom, you will usually only teach that group of children. Whatever group of kids come in your class at the beginning of the day, that those 18 kids or whatever, that's the only group of kids you teach. In a departmentalized school, children switch classrooms. So then you're responsible for more than just your homeroom. Think of it as high school. So every every teacher that you rotated to, they they have multiple classes. So all of those kids were their responsibility. So in a departmentalized school, you have more than just your homeroom. For example, I have 18 kids on my homeroom roster, but after all second graders rotate to me for reading, I technically have 37 children in all. Okay, which isn't a problem for me because again, I don't see them all at one time. They all rotate through to me throughout the day. The other con that I would say for departmentalized school is that you don't really get to perfect your skills in the other subject area that you don't teach. So for me, I teach reading. So yes, I know how to teach math. However, I'm not as up to date on the current things because I don't teach that in my day to day. I try to make sure that I'm doing refreshers or things like that so that I'm staying up to date, but I do have to go to my co-teacher for some things um, if I need to refer to some type of math concept just to make sure that I'm teaching it correctly. So those were my only two cons that I have. Other people may have more, but for me, those were the only two. To my pros. One of my pros is that you get to focus on one subject. And this, I feel like for me, has just been like a lifesaver because I don't have to worry about teaching them science and I don't have to worry about teaching them social studies or teaching them um, math. I can purely focus on reading. And the fact that I can focus purely on reading allows me to truly intervene with each and every child. I feel like if I had to teach reading and math and social studies and science, it will be so many areas that I have to intervene in for one child. It'll be really hard for me to do that. So the fact that I only have to intervene on their reading standards and really make sure I close those gaps allow me to focus more on their deficiencies or things that they need. Another pro is time. In schools where you only teach one class, you have to allocate time for all these different subjects. Whereas because I only teach reading, I can dedicate my entire time that they're in my class to different reading skills. So I don't have to worry about not being, um, I don't have to worry about, oh, I didn't teach science today or, oh, I got to go do math at this time. It's really me just making sure that I'm teaching all the components of reading. Another pro is that you become very familiar with the standards or curricula of that subject. So I can tell you reading standards right here. Our our I 2.1 is asking and answering questions. You know, I can tell you the standards. I can tell you what the outcome is of the standards that the students are supposed to obtain because those are literally the things that I look at on a day-to-day -day basis. So I get to perfect my craft in that specific area. 
The other pro that some may not consider a pro, but I do, is that you get to impact or touch a lot of children and have different and speak and talk to different students. Sometimes, like my first period class, they'll do things that'll upset me, and I'll just be like, okay. When my second period class comes, they may have they may have a different energy that kind of gets me back to where I need to be. So having the different groups allow you to kind of regroup with the different group, in my opinion. So those are my pros. Some tips and some tricks that I have for you or some things I think that you should remember when going into a departmentalized school is organization is key. It's important to be organized because you have different groups of kids. You want to make sure that you're not getting their things mixed up so that you can save on time. Making sure that class A is over here and class B is over here is very important. Also, um, I invested in a lot of bins to stay organized. So I have a lot of bins in my classroom, folders, everything. Because you'll have to keep up with a lot of different parents, you want to make sure that you have a system for doing that. So for me and my co-teacher, all second graders are in a remind group chat, all of their parents. So when we send out a remind, we just send it out to everyone. If we want to talk or speak on a specific class, the children all know who homerooms they're in, or we give them like special names. So that the parents know that if I say, oh, defenders, I'm talking about my homeroom. If I say Avengers, I'm talking about these people. So it allows the parents to all stay connected to the teachers and so that the teachers won't have a boatload of work as far as communicating with parents. Another tip that I would give you is, like I said, because you're departmentalized, you focus on one subject area. So make sure that you're still kind of integrating as much as possible. Um, for me, again, my second graders, they only go to reading and math, so they usually only get their social studies and science through reading. So I try to integrate that as much as possible into my lesson, even though I don't have to, but I feel like those are important skills for them to know. Another tip that I would have is to really make sure that you have a routine. And you want to have a routine because you want to make sure that your transitions from class to class are smooth. So for me, for instance, my homeroom class knows that they have to clean up everything and put everything up before the next class comes in because other kids will then be sitting at their space. They also know that they share spaces. Well, not, not now during COVID. We kind of stay in one room. No one switches. We do. Um, but they knew that, you know, all of their things are in one specific space and whoever else sits at their table, their stuff is in one specific space and what to touch and what they could not touch. So making sure that you have those routines in place so that no one's, no one's things are coming up missing and it's just a very smooth transition. So be organized, set routines and be consistent and make sure that you have a line of communication for all parents and all students. So again, if you need anything else, please remember that I keep my email in the description box below. If you ever need anything or have any questions, I hope that this video helped you. I tried to keep this video short. I think this is the shortest video I've ever done. Thank you for watching. Watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. See you next time on Superhero Headquarters.